I am currently in quarantine with COVID and my two youngest children. And I just first want to say, before we start talking about dehumidifiers, that I'm so grateful that to have a bride who is happy to take care of children because after having spent two full days nonstop with my two young kids, my brain doesn't work. I feel really like I actually feel a little bit dumb because I just can't make anything happen up here. So I wanted to take a step away. I know I'm sick also, but I think that this is just something that happens when you hang out with little kids nonstop. So what we're going to talk about is two things. One is a phenomenon that happens at our house, which is was designed and built by us. Um, and the dehumidifier there does an interesting thing. My parents' house, where we are quarantining right now, was... Uh, you know, totally the HVAC system was completely redone recently. We had a video about the Mitsubishi system that we put in there, but we also put a bunch of accessory things in, one of which is a dehumidifier. And we had an issue with the air conditioner uh, not keeping up. It was just kind of anecdotal information from my dad uh, in the afternoons. And so I called out my guy who's Brent Ridley, H&M Services. He also runs the Tool Pros podcast. Uh, he's here in Atlanta. And he came out yesterday, spent two hours kind of tinkering with things. They couldn't find anything wrong. So, um, but they had a, a proposition, which is that they were saying that the air mix, um, the dehumidifier might have been running often enough in the afternoon that it was actually heating up the air and then making the air conditioner fight harder. So I want to show you this calculator right here, which is the Munters calculator. You could find it at uh, the link at our website, buildingperformanceworkshop.com. If you go down to the bottom, there's calculators is a link at the bottom. All kinds of different links there for you. Um, so what we're going to do is just quickly run this scenario in this house and why I don't actually think that this is a problem with some little caveats here. So we're going to use imperial units, which is American inches and pounds and stuff like that. SI is uh, metric. We're at a thousand foot elevation here in Atlanta. We're gonna do volume. Mass would be the weight of the air, and we don't need to do that because we can actually do the volume of the air, which is often better because then you don't have to calculate for things like temperature. Um, this would do all of that because it's a calculator, but it's okay, we'll just use the CFM. So here, the dehumidifier runs about 300 CFM, and it pushes that into a duct system for a Mitsubishi system that is running 615 CFM of airflow constantly, that's its low speed. That's the 30,000 BTU per hour uh, heat pump on, on their P series. So 300 out of a total of 900 is about 33%. So if 33% of the air is going to be from what the dehumidifier kicks out, dehumidifier is both dry and warm. They'll kick out about 15 degree warmer air than they receive. So this thing is taking air from the house, drying it and warming it, and then giving back into the house 90 degree air. And the reason that we want this thing to be delivering into the duct system is so it can mix, which is what this calculator is all about. So we're gonna call the uh, moisture content in here 40% relative humidity. And then we come down here, and for the 67% air, we're going to have it be 75 degrees at uh, what we've been keeping the dehu at, which is 50% relative humidity. And when we calculate, and normally you might have to press this button, by the way, when you use this, just FYI, um, the air does not seem to be making this much harder on the air conditioner. Air conditioners can deal with this temperature. Uh, in fact, they're rated at this temperature, 80 degree interior uh, temperature. So that's okay. We have uh, an overall drying effect. You can see 48% relative humidity at this 79 uh, degree. We still want this number to come down. So we'd want to keep on running this thing through. Um, and hopefully this number keeps getting drier and drier. Also, if we upped this number to 60%, then we get wetter. Uh, as well. All, all the relative humidity is only affecting the moisture. It's not affecting the temperature, as you can see here. So what I've done now is made the dehu run, just in case that was the thing, because Brent was a little concerned about it. I upped the dehu to 60%. And the reason that we wanted to do that is because uh, in this uh, graphic here that we've got, which is called the universal layout, let me move this away from my face. You can download this for free off our website. 
Uh, you can see that the dehue, best case scenario, has its own independent return, which this one does, and then it dumps into the supply. This one does not do that. We're doing the old school way where we dump this into the return. When you dump into the supply, that means that the air handler's evaporator coil and the dehumidifier can both dry, and then they're mixing their air streams together. That's good. We're still getting the mixing, but by dumping this into the return over here, we're not getting the heat pumps air evaporator coil drying probably because the air is both warmer and drier going into the machine and so it just kind of takes away that so probably at that point the dehu needs to run more often because it's the only thing drying so that's why we we upped that to 60 percent now in my house we've got it set up exactly this way the perfect way and the thing is that there are times at night where the first takeoff right here, the first run out on this system is my bedroom, our master suite with Grace. And um, at night, in the spring and fall, the air conditioner will not be running because it's nighttime, sun's not out, it's 68 degrees outside, no problems. Um, but it's moist because we also have this ERV running nonstop and we're all night long bringing in outdoor air. And even though an ERV has a much less uh, effect on the humidity levels inside than an HRV would, which is why I always recommend ERV, not HRV, no matter what climate you're in, period. Uh, it's going to have a net humidifying effect if it's humid outside. So overnight, the air, AC is not running, but the dehu will kick on. And when that happens, we're mixing this air, and then this air becomes that 79 degree temperature that we saw at the beginning in the calculation. And that 79 degree air is being delivered into my bedroom, which is then takes a little while for the air to fill my bedroom, go out of our bedroom, go through the hallway, down the hallway to the thermostat, which is right next to the central return. And then the thermostat goes, oh, we should probably be cooling because it's a little warm in here for some reason suddenly. And then it kicks on the AC. So in the meantime, I have woken up in this room sweating and being like, what is going on? So that's something that might happen. The advice that I uh, heard the other day is keep this uh, injection point where the dehu, make sure that this length before you have a run out is at least three to five feet. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do. There's my kids, so it's gonna, it's gonna be time for me to go in just a minute here. But if you can make sure that that air gets mixed appropriately, then that's great. Otherwise, if you, God forbid, had to have a run out right here, you might have actually some of that 90 degree air getting taken into one of the rooms. Because of course, this air handler never shuts off the way that we've designed this system. And in fact, Mitsubishi systems as always are designed to run nonstop the air handler. So I hope that that's interesting uh, to you guys. I find this kind of stuff interesting. Again, my brain is not working at full capacity today, but um, what the? Again, my brain is not working at full capacity today, but I think that this was a, a story that I wanted to be telling uh, and just this AC thing happened to come out. So I've got the thermostat now at this house locked at 75 degrees. We'll see if it has any problem uh, maintaining temperature today while I'm living here full time. And then that's honestly like that's the best way to do things. And that's totally impossible for most scenarios to have the diagnostics expert actually live in the house for a few days and start to really feel things. So make sure you comment below if you have anything else to add about dehues. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.